some good news to report on nearly all fronts. Perch patterns have been working really well. This week's bug bite report. Just keep snapping it off the box. The down imaging, the side imaging. There's a lot of different variations and different ways to rig this. Oh, yeah! Look at this guy. They are heavy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> on today's show, we're talking revolutions in angling. This is Angling Buzz TV. I'm Troy Linder. And I'm Jim Edlund. And the revolutions that have taken place in fishing are quite incredible. When you just talk about tackle, equipment, and electronics, it's absolutely amazing. What, in your opinion, do you think is the number one thing? Without a doubt, three letters, GPS, Global Positioning Satellites, combined mm -hmm. with high-definition mapping, yeah. we're finding fish faster than ever before, Troy. Yeah, absolutely. I'd like to add to that. I think side imaging and down imaging has been a huge player, giving us a crystal clear HD picture of what's happening away from the boat and down underneath the boat and actually 360 degrees around the boat. But there's been other advancements as well besides electronics. Amazing technology, but we've got it in super lines, faster mm -hmm. reels, lighter rods, more efficient outboards, mm -hmm. faster, more affordable boats. We're all benefiting from this mm -hmm. technology. It's pretty incredible. Yes, it is. Year after year, exciting new products emerge that allow anglers to find and catch fish faster than ever before. Good news for anglers of all walks as flagship technologies trickle down into reasonably priced offerings. But perhaps no single technology has made a bigger impact than the introduction of GPS to fish finders in the 1990s, a game changer we take for granted in 2017 as we locate and keep track of fishing locations with the literal press of a button. But it wasn't long ago that we were triangulating boat position in relation to shoreline features. A radio or TV tower, a tall group of trees, an old red barn. Now finding the spot on the spot happens in a nanosecond, as today's fish finders communicate with satellites providing pinpoint positioning. Used in conjunction with high definition lake mapping, like Hummingbird Lake Master products, GPS technology allows us to accurately waypoint key contours. And used with sonar and Hummingbird side imaging, an even greater level of fish finding power. And then there's high definition cameras that show you what is truly swimming below your boat. Combine all this with smart trolling motors like the Minn Kota Altrex and Spotlock electronic anchoring iPilot link to follow depth contours, vegetation, and bottom hardness transitions, and it's like we're fishing in the future, today. Getting to fish is easier too. New boat designs and fuel efficient outboards provide both fishability and reliability. And on the presentation side of the equation, lifelike baits, high performance super lines, faster geared reels, and technique specific rods have also upped the odds. Companies like St. Croix Rods offer powerful, sensitive sticks for virtually every species and presentation you can imagine. What does the future have in store? More exciting fish finding and catching equipment and tackle, that's for certain. Just when we thought we've seen it all, something groundbreaking emerges. It's mind-boggling at times. Woohoo, buddy, buddy. Now, a lot of you out there might be wondering, where do all these fishing advancements come from? Troy, you're in the competitive bass world. You're on the mm -hmm. West Coast. You're traveling across the country. Mm -hmm. You're fishing tournaments. Your finger's on the pulse of the sport. Yeah. What's your take on all this stuff? Well, I think it's, it's not only bass fishing, but I think it's, it's competitive fishing, generally speaking, that, that makes these advances. You have to win a tournament. You have to do something different. And a lot of times when you see the results online, oh my gosh, why, I never even thought about that. And that's what changes the sport and moves it forward. And, and beyond bass, we're talking about walleye, crappie, even carp into Europe. Yeah, I, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. Mm -hmm. And anytime there's competitive fishing, and now with social media, information mm -hmm. you know, travels at the speed <laughs> yeah. of light, everybody knows what's going on. I benefit as a multi-species angler up mm -hmm. north, hey, whatever the bite is, that's what I want to fish that yeah. day. I benefit from all the same stuff. It's super cool. Mm -hmm. you know, so right now, why don't we take a look at the myriad of game fish that are swimming in our fresh water. So whether it's bass, crappie, hey, there's lots of stuff you can chase and you can utilize these advancements to your advantage today. This underwater minute is brought to you by Aquaview, the original underwater camera. Few people realize that there are over 1,000 different fish species swimming in North America's fresh water. 
Our largest true freshwater game fish is the lake sturgeon. Historically, lake sturgeon grew in excess of 250 pounds throughout the Great Lakes region. But in the late 1800s through early 1900s, many of lake sturgeon stocks were grossly overharvested. These majestic fish are now making a comeback in some states because of stocking programs with very specialized regulations. According to angler surveys, largemouth and smallmouth bass are America's most popular fish. Panfish in the form of crappies and bluegills take a close second. Catfish take up the third spot, followed by the walleye's huge following in the North Country, as well as many cold water trout and salmon species. Yes, each region has its favorites. And in recent years, Minnesota has seen growing participation in muskie fishing. Interestingly, this coincides with an aggressive muskie stocking program that started well over 20 years ago. Fact is, this is but one example of how fishing has improved for numerous species in many regions thanks to DNR management strategies, stocking programs, slot limits, and angler ethics. AIS, or Aquatic Invasive Species, is unquestionably one of the biggest concerns on the horizon for fisheries managers and anglers. Remember, we're all responsible to stop the spread of AIS. Clean, drain, and dry is mandatory for all who use our precious water resources. You know, one of the fish that are on my bucket list, I should say, is sturgeon-like, that I want to catch one of those dinosaurs. Now, coming up after the break, we have our highlight destination feature, followed by the first of our buzz bite reports as angling buzz continues. You have a choice, turf or surf. It's fishing season. Welcome to the outdoors. We're baiting, casting, drifting, and limiting out. The outdoors never felt so good. Catch, release, and keepers. The outdoors never tasted so good. It's fishing season. We are outdoors. Mills Fleet Farm. Excel Outdoors, storage solutions for sportsmen. Cargo rack, cargo trunk, bucket caddy, jaws of ice, the best auger carrier ever. Hunting, the ladder stand caddy, fishing game boards, and the extruder board. Organize your life outside. Excel Outdoors. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. It's time now for our highlight destination feature. We're super excited. 2017, we'll be traveling all around the upper Midwest, mm -hmm. chasing the best bites there in store. Big brown bass, river opportunities, trophy muskies, crappies, you name it. Isn't that right, Troy? Yeah, it is. We're really excited for it. And this week, we're going to Big Winnie in central Minnesota, one of the finest multi-species fishery around. This 67,000 acre lake in northern Minnesota's Itasca County offers clear and pristine waters with very little shoreline development. On average, there's as much as 10 feet of water visibility. Combine that with an average depth of 15 feet, a 70 foot maximum, and structure galore, and you start to see why the fourth largest lake in Minnesota is considered an angler's paradise. Flats, points, sunken islands, bays, weed beds, Winnie's got it all. Plus, it's the kind of lake that's just plain fun to fish. Drawing anglers year after year to the same resort, spring, summer, fall, and winter. From primitive campgrounds to family-owned resorts with old world charm, to hotels with all the amenities of home, and then some. The Lake Winnie area has got it. And all within three hours of the Minneapolis and Duluth airports. What makes the lake so popular? 
Winnie is the perfect destination for anglers looking for both quantity and quality the entire calendar year. The kind of lake where odds are good you'll put together a fish fry and catch a new personal best. The lake's walleye population is stable and healthy with high numbers of many year classes present and some really big fish too. The hard water jumbo perch fishery is on the upswing and trophy pike, crappies and bluegills round out the bill no matter what the season is. And the bass fishing? Let's just say we know a lot of folks who'd prefer it remain a secret. Winnie also attracts muskie hunters. After all, Winnie produced Minnesota's long-standing state record muskie, a 54-pound, 56-inch fish caught by Art Lyons in 1957. Although there's a lot of water to cover, big fish still roam these waters. Bordered by the Chippewa National Forest and other fish-filled waters like Little Winnie, Cutfoot Sioux, Little Cutfoot, and countless other lakes perfect for multi-species day trips, it would take a lifetime to explore this fishing paradise. I know over the years I've had some really good times on Winnie with my buddies. You know, the walleye fishing, the perch fishing, hard water, open water, bass fishing for yeah. you. Muskies, it's got it all. Yeah, it's an incredible place with just some amazing big fish and lots of them. And right now, well, it's time for the first of our BuzzBite reports. You know, Troy, we've had some really interesting weather across our region. We had early ice out, but right now, Mother Nature is not playing nice with everybody <laughs> in the Angling Buzz region. You're right. It's snowing in some areas, including up on uh, Devil's Lake in North Dakota with Jason Mitchell for the first of our BuzzBite reports. Well, we've had a pretty nice April until now. We've had some nice weather. Now those fronts come through. We've got snow dumping on us, and uh, this is definitely going to slow down the fish. You know, North Dakota doesn't have a closed season, so we've been walleye fishing for quite a while, and, and we've had a really good spring bite so far, you know, as far as pre-spawn walleyes, and a lot of big fish have been getting caught. A lot of fish have been getting caught from shore. And so the program here before this front was basically you're focusing on current areas, areas where there's moving water, water coming to the lake either from the ditches or the tributaries that feed Devil's Lake. For the most part, anglers are pitching jigs with soft plastics, a soft plastic paddle tail, like a seismic grub, for example, in that three inch size, really, really effective. With this front coming through, it's gonna change things. So we've got cold water temperatures that are gonna get a lot colder. We've also got a lot of fish that are starting to dump their eggs, and so the fishing has progressively gotten tougher here even this past week. A slip bobber in three to seven feet of water and then wacky rigging that leech so it doesn't curl up on the hook in this cold water, it has started to be the ticket. I imagine it's gonna take you know a couple of days at least to straighten out after this front, and uh, from here on out, you know we should just keep getting progressively better fishing as this water temperature starts to creep back up. Absolutely, Devil's Lake has some of the finest shore fishing opportunities in the country, walleyes, white bass, everything. I think you should film a video out there, Troy. Yeah, it's on my list of places to go for sure. Right now, our next report, we're joining Bro on Lake Winnie. Water temperatures are already up to 49 to 52 degrees, depending on which bays you're in. And when the warmer water comes in like this, the panfish are here. They might not be up on the bank, but they, they'll be in the basins in the bays. So we're targeting jumbo perch today because they're also open. You can go for crappies, bluegills, perch this time of year. Jumbo perch are great eating and they're a lot of fun. And this time of year when the water temperature gets closer to 50, they're done spawning. So a lot of the fish you're gonna catch are males. And uh, so warm water, doesn't matter what the weather is, they're here to catch. My bobber just went up. There we go, all right. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice jumbo perch. Fun to catch, great to eat. Good point from bro, don't overlook the perch and now the next couple weeks, it's bluegills and crappie time. When we come back, more buzz bite reports as angling buzz continues. Lake Vermilion, explore, relax, reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Oh. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do, you'll never get bored. Rooms with a view, we got them. Lake Vermilion, four seasons of fun. 
If you're looking at this, how do you know it's not this? If you see this, how do you know it's not actually this? Trust your AquaView and you'll see the real underwater world. AquaView leads by innovation. First in high definition, first in handheld viewing, the finest underwater optics, the brightest, sharpest screens, the original underwater camera, and the fish finder that puts you on the fish. Sportfish Michigan is your number one source for top charter captains and fishing guides in Michigan. Our network of professionals are full-time anglers with years of experience providing customers with the best possible fishing trip services. Fish for trout, salmon, steelhead on Lake Michigan or its famous tributary rivers, the Traverse City area's world-class smallmouth bass, walleye fishing on the Detroit River and Saginaw Bay or Northern Michigan spectacular ice fishing. We do it all. Sportfish Michigan. Get out. Get bit. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Now let's check in with Ben Wolf out in Michigan. He's on some great bites. It's early May and we have lots of options for you throughout the state. For anglers down in southeast Michigan, we have some fantastic walleye fishing as well as bass fishing. Lake St. Clair is producing some very nice smallmouth bass right now. The jerkbait bite is really nice with a nice good long pause. You know, figure out that cadence, really experiment to see what those fish want. For the walleye angler on the Detroit River, we like to use a one ounce jig. It seems to be the perfect mix of being able to find the bottom easily and be able to contact the bottom on every lift and drop, which is what we want to do. One thing that's critical for our success is using a stinger hook. We really want to make sure that all of our jigs have a stinger hook on the back of them. Further up north on Grand Traverse Bay, we have an absolutely phenomenal Cisco bite going on right now. Just cast out a blade bait, let it sink, and then yo-yo retrieve that thing back and you're going to absolutely load the boat. If you're looking for a captain or guide in the state of Michigan, or you would like more information, check us out at sportfishmichigan.com or give us a call today. Jerkbait fishing early season, cold water fishing not only applies to bass, but any species. Having that pause and slowing down is critical. Our next report is from Jeff Evans over in Wisconsin. We've got a lot of fishing opportunities going on in our part of the state right now. They've got a really good trolling bite going on Shawamigan Bay for trout and salmon. The Lake Superior tributary steelhead run is in full swing. And as you can see, we've got a good crappie bite going as well. These fish are just staging up to spawn. We're catching them around 10 feet of water, close to spawning areas. Water temperatures are in the high 40s right now. And we're just using a simple slip bobber approach. As you can see, and I've got a little two inch Berkeley gulp uh, minnow grub on there. And we're just setting that at about six feet of water, letting it drift in the wind. And this bite will just keep getting better as the water continues to warm. Our inland opener in the Hayward Lakes area is on May 6th, so that's when we'll be able to get after walleyes and pike and fish like that. Yes, definitely a lot of panfish opportunities throughout the Badger State, and of course, they're looking forward to their walleye opener coming up. Now let's check in with Billy Rosner up on Lake Vermilion. The big buzz on the lake this year is a new walleye regulation. You'll be able to keep walleyes under 20 inches this year, so check your regulation on that before you get out on the water. With a little early ice out this year, we have plenty of panfish opportunities. I'd say with the water starting to warm up here in the afternoons, there'll be some crappie fishing soon here up in the shallows. Focus on your northern bays, northern shorelines. They warm up the quickest. Also in those areas, you'll find some jumbo perch. A pretty easy approach on the crappies and the perch. Uh, small jigs, crappie minnow. You can fish a slip bobber with a small jig, minnow or plastic for both species and that should get you some panfish. For lodging opportunities, contact the Lake Vermilion Resort Association. Till next time, safe travels, have a great week. Our next report is from the Alexandria region with Josh Hagemeister with a pretty cool technique for catching crappies. Springtime crappies in the Alexandria area, you can't go wrong. All sizes, big, small, and medium. Another eater today, caught in one of my favorite presentations. I call it the wacky rig for crappies. Uh, basically, it's like rigging a plastic worm for bass, hooking midsection. I've got it rigged on a number six red gamagatsu hook. This is a two inch jig and grub from Gulp, you know, Berkeley Gulp, right here. And I throw this in the thick cover, just playing on a little bobber like that. I let it sit there, I twitch it around a little bit, wiggles like that, looks like a minnow. The beauty of it is, this plastic fake minnow cannot swim around the bulrushes and the cattails and all the other weeds you're, the crappies are hiding in right now like your minnow can, so it stays snag free. 
And so when you've got two or three kids in the boat catching panfish in the shallows, uh, you're saving a lot of time and still catching a lot of fish. And for the last of our Buzz Bite reports, we check in with Chuck Hasse up on Leech Lake. We officially had ice out on April 14th, uh, so we haven't spent a lot of time in the boat, uh, but when we have, we've typically been targeting perch, uh, checking some areas for crappies and bluegills, and what we're finding are uh, the perch are right in the middle of spawn right now. So uh, we're, we're finding active males in that four to six, seven feet of water, uh, sand to rubble transition areas is where you're gonna find those. Uh, crappies and bluegills are still staging in that five to 10 feet, uh, they're outside the, the shallow, muddy bays, uh, the, the resort harbors, um, that type of thing. So in the next few days, we get some sun, uh, that's going to help speed that bite up as well. We want to thank all of our BuzzBite reporters for that great information. And as you can tell, there's a lot of different bites going on right now. And it's only going to improve, Troy, as that weather stabilizes. You've got fish that were staging, moving shallower. We've got openers coming up, Minnesota, Wisconsin. It's an exciting time, and, and the bite's going to heat up. Yeah, yeah. When the weather warms up, the bite's going to heat up even better. After this break, we have our cool product segment and our technique of the week as Angling Buzz continues. Because boaters know and follow Minnesota's aquatic invasive species laws, 98% of lakes are not known to have any zebra mussels. 95% are not known to have any kind of invasive animals or plants. Let's keep it this way. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from watercraft, including the motor, and keep drain plugs out during transport. Dispose of unused bait properly. Together, we're preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in Minnesota. Explore Alexandria, Minnesota. Whether it's a long weekend or a week long loaded with family fun, you'll find plenty of things to do in Alex. Unleash your inner explorer with over 300 lakes, beaches, parks, hundreds of miles of trails, dining, golf, shopping, museums, and history. Alexandria is Minnesota's hidden gem. Go to explorealex.com to find your vacation this season. Running in rough water can be a pain, literally. Hey, I never knew how comfortable a ride could be until I added smooth moves to my boat. It's four spring design with hydraulic shock can smooth even the roughest of rides. With the built-in slide and swivel, you maintain all the function of your existing seat. A turn of the handle, adjust for conditions and passenger weight. Hey, it's easy to install and built to last. Smooth moves, your back will thank you. I know mine does. And now it's time for today's cool product segment brought to you by Mills Fleet Farm. Revolutions in angling. The products discussed here today have had a part in that. Underwater cameras, they've been around for quite a few years now, but Aquaview was there first. The new HD700i, high definition. I've spent a lot of time on the ice and in open water with this camera. It's incredible. You've got a super bright display, probably the best optics in the business, 100 foot cable, just a fantastic machine to help you find fish. In terms of presentations, it's hard to debate how much lipless crankbaits have done to help us catch fish, whether walleyes, bass, or panfish. New from Bagley, you've got the Rattle and B minus. This bait excels in shallow water and, and around grass. For deeper waters, you've got the Rattle and B plus, great for deep water jigging or casting in deeper waters. From Rapa, pretty hard to beat the rip and wrap, whether it's a natural finish or a UV pattern, for everything from panfish to those largest predators gets plain bit. And from Northland Tackle, you've got the Rip and Shad. They've got a lot of unique colors available and finishes. It's a multi-BB bait. Different profiles are available for all kinds of species. Another great bait. Another huge revolution in angling has been the development around line categories. Super line, we call braid, has been around for a number of years now. It's given us more sensitivity, less stretch, longer life. Combined with a fluorocarbon leader, great for walleye fishing, great for bass fishing, even in lower tests, great for panfish, and in those 50, 65, 80 pound class categories, the line you definitely want to fish muskies. From Suffix, you've got 832. I've used this for years. From Tough Line, 
dominate. It's an eight carrier braid, also super strong, available in natural finish and high vis for catfishing or jigging, other line watching techniques. In terms of products that have revolutionized our sport, there have been a lot of better mouse traps introduced, but it's pretty hard to beat the old Rapla fillet knife when it comes to longevity and performance. This particular set is available at Mills Flea Farm. You've got a four inch blade for those smaller fish. You've got a seven and a half for you know, walleyes and some, some, some of your larger quarry. It's just plain tough to beat and they've stood the test of time. All these products here are available at your local Mills Fleet Farm or on fleetfarm.com. Lastly, here's another cool product I want to show you guys. If you're rigging your boat, you want to protect your electronics, you need a quality mount. There are a lot on the market, but this new mount from Balls Out is made in the United States, uh, high quality aircraft aluminum, just a fantastic design that keeps your electronics in place. You want to protect those investments, you want to be able to see that display. They have one model that brings it 12 inches off your deck. Now that's pretty cool. And now it's time for the technique of the week. We're going to join Jeremy Smith, who's out on the water mapping his own lake with Humminbird Auto Chart Live. Some really cool game changing technology you'll want to see. When it comes to revolutions in angling, in my opinion, probably the biggest thing in technology would have to be GPS and mapping. Now, it's amazing today what we've got with the new fish finders in terms of cartography. We've got high definition maps that are available for a ton of lakes across the country. Now, where I'm from in central Minnesota, I spend a lot of time on small bodies of water that aren't necessarily charted or have a decent map. I also do a lot of river fishing, and that's where Auto Chart Live is an amazing revolution in fishing. What I mean by Auto Chart Live it gives you the ability to create your own map. That's right, create your own map when you're on the water. So, for example, I'm on this small lake right now. There's no map available on it. So by simply turning on the Auto Chart Live feature in my GPS unit, I'm able to record data to be able to make a contour map of the lake. This is amazing. Now that I've got this point mapped out, I can go back and precisely fish the contours. This technology at one time was out of reach for a lot of anglers because of price, but now it's available to even the size five units. So you want to talk about a revolution in fishing? I'd say Auto Chart Live has to be near the top of the list. That Auto Chart Live is truly a game changer. It's just incredible the way they can map any body of water. It's really revolutionized the way we can catch fish. Definitely cool technology. Hey, and on next week's episode, we cover walleye mastery. And we would also like to remind you about helping stop the spread of aquatic invasive species. Please remember, anytime you leave a lake, clean, drain, drain and dry. dry. And also check us out online at anglingbuzz.com. We have all of our reports there. We have tips, we have tactics that'll help you catch fish right now. Thank you for joining us this week. I'm Troy Linder. And I'm Jim Edlin. We'll see you next week. This week's Buzz Bite Report. Tony Road, Ray Broso. Lee Talkin here. Brad Durek up here on the Red River. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. We'll see you next week.